So looking at the frequency distribution table that we made in our example yesterday in the video, we're still looking at the 1986 home run hitters. We filled this entire table in before coming up with our frequencies and cumulative frequencies and of course our class limits and our class marks. We're going to use this information from my histogram and we're going to use this information from my ogive which we'll talk about in a little bit. So what are ogives and what are histograms? Well we're talking about quantitative versus quantitative data here. Typically when we think about line graphs and bar graphs we think about qualitative. The horizontal axis is the class limits but note how the first class is going to be set up. There are the similarities that the two have. How are they a little bit different? Well, a histogram is going to be very similar to a bar graph. The difference here between its histogram and a bar graph is going to be instead of spaces between the bars, because we're talking about quantitative data, the bars will be touching each other. And my vertical axes, unlike OJABs, will be based on the frequencies. OJABs, on the other hand, very similar to a line graph. And where they differ from histograms besides that is that we're talking about cumulative frequency now for OJIVs. So let's look at a histogram first. Please take a second here, fill in these notes as you have them. If something doesn't make sense, please make note of that so we can talk about it tomorrow. So pause the video and take your chance to write these in. So in this particular case, I look at my class limits, and notice I said earlier that we're going to look between, we're going to use our class limits, our maxes, but I have to remember that I have to go back behind my previous class because the beginning number, the first number, is non-inclusive. So that 4 would not be included, but I want it to go up to the 8. So I'm going to use the 8, the 12, the 16, and go all the way forward. I need to remember to put that 4 in there because the beginning of my bars is going to be non-inclusive with the back number, the 8 in this case, being included. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see I have a frequency of 4 right here. So I'm going to make myself a bar of 4. Then I notice I have between 8 and 16, 8 and 12 I mean, a bar of 6, a bar of 3. And I'm going to go ahead and set this all the way up to set my histogram up. When I go ahead and do this, the key to this is make sure that all of your bars are the same width, meaning that all the numbers across the axes on the bottom your horizontal axes are all the same distance apart. Go ahead and make your histogram and pause the video while you do that. Well, here's my histogram after it's all set up. The only thing missing on my histogram now is I have to have labels. So we're talking about home runs. So I have to make sure that the person knows I'm talking about home runs and the side is going to be frequency. So I have to make sure that it says frequency also. This way it's very clear to everybody what they're looking at. I also have to have some kind of a title with this, just like we do with all the other graphs. So in this case, I probably would say home run hitters from 1986. Now I have all the information there. The reason we like this is, just like a bar graph, the person can tell a lot of information about this. They can focus, instead of having to look at the table and look at the numbers, they can obviously tell that this class between 16 and 20, there were seven guys that hit in between 16 and 20 home runs. And the fact that this is missing, we can't just skip that part, because the fact that that represents a zero, if I'm a statistician for a baseball team, that might have been a very big deal. Why is there zero there? Why are these two guys way out here? The visual pretty similar to the frequency distribution. It's just organizing, but because people like graphs, people are mostly visual, this is another option for that. It's a way to take our data that we had, we organize it with a frequency distribution, now we displayed it with a histogram. So let's go over and check out OGI for a second. And you're going to want to look back at your frequency distributions and your cumulative frequency distributions mainly for this. So now we're going to turn our attention to the OJIV. If you look down the bottom here, we set this up pretty similarly. The difference is now where home runs is still my horizontal, 
Instead of frequency, I have to have cumulative frequency because an ogive builds upon the cumulative frequency. I still have the numbers 4, 8, 12, 16 down the bottom, but I'm going to use these class marks to tell me where the dots are going to go in my line graph or ogive. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go between 4 and 8, which is where 6 and a half is. I'm going to say cumulative frequency is 4, so I'm going to put a simple little dot at 4. Then I'm going to go between 8 and 12 and put a dot at 10. Between 12 and 16 and put a dot at 13. Okay, go ahead and take a couple seconds and fill this in. So now that you have all your marks in there, and we're focusing on cumulative frequency, and it's going to look like a line graph, all you're simply going to do is take those points and connect them with the straightest possible lines you can. And as you can tell, mine are not perfect. And now this is going to sort of tell us where the biggest jumps were. Like I can tell, there's a pretty steep line in this area here. I have a pretty not-so-steep line here, kind of steep here. And that's going to tell me where my big-time classes are with the most home run hitters in them. And obviously, with no increase, you're talking about the class that had nobody in it. The O job is more used to tell us where percentiles are. It's also going to help us figure out where less than this certain amount. For example, I can tell how many home run hitters hit less than 30 home runs ballpark by doing this. We're only looking at this for 35 hitters. Imagine this was being done for 135 hitters. We'll talk more about this in class.